American movement, we have to base that on this, this spirituality. Without any spiritual foundations, no organizations will ever accomplish anything. And in fact, without spiritual basis, it will all crumble. How do you go about developing the spiritual basis? It's already there? It is already there. It has been with us for thousands of years. And many of our people are going back to their native religions, especially our young people who has been out into different parts of this country. Many of our elderly people has never left the county, have never left the state to to really understand how it feels to be in large cities, New York, Chicago, Los Angeles, San Francisco, and around. Many of our elderly people doesn't know how it feels to be in these large cities and be discriminated against. But it took our young people to get out seeking jobs, going to these large cities. And many of them were turned down for jobs, not because they were alcoholics, not because they were ex-convicts, but simply because they were Indians, they were turned down. And even though applying for jobs, they never did get jobs because of uh, discriminating against their color. And then for many years, our young people, regardless of education, how much education they had did not help them because of their color. They were badly discriminated against, so they had to walk the streets of New York City with their heads bowed down in shame. But today, I find that those days are over. So our people begin to stand up in pride again. And this all came out from our young people who were willing to stand up and fight against the injustice done to our people. And today we find proud Indians again. And the only way they found pride was that they had to return back to who they are. The government has spent billions and billions of dollars on educating the Indian, trying to make an Indian whom he is not. And it has all failed. And we have proven that because, again, Mr. Indian stands up and again he's turned around and looked at his valuable way of life. He's turned around to see that there is nothing wrong with his religion. And so many of our young people has went back and picked up the religion that was put down for so long by education, Christian teachings, that put down the religion of the American Indi Indians. And now they are returning back to what was given to them from the beginning of times. We can date, we can look back through the history, and we can date when Christianity began. We can understand uh, where different denominations, how they originated, where they come from. But native religion, we have to go back all the way to the beginning of times. Because in the beginning of times is when we found our religion. This is where we found a way of life for our people. And it keeps going on? Yes. It is still there. And the, the tribal governments that we talk about, sometimes we get caught up in, in the laws that were set down for us. The laws that many times we argue about was made by men. But when we talk about the tribal government, the ancient government, it was not established by any government on earth because the governments that we follow are thousands of years old. And it is, it is nothing new to us. It is a government that is workable. It had worked for our people for thousands of years until that government was interrupted with. Then we begin to change our way of life, we begin to change our language, uh, our religion was changed into Christianity, and many of the tribal ways was changed. But what the life that we live in today is a modern way that was forced upon our Indian people. 
The governments that we have on every reservation today, such as the elected system, is not a tribal government, but it is a government that was laid down by the white man for us to live by. And that's why we have many disagreements, we have many factions among our tribes, because we are practicing something that does not belong to us. But when we, when we look back at the ancient government that we had, that government was workable for us, and it worked for us into thousands of years with no disagreement. So wherever I go, and I meet traditional people, we have no problems. We, have, we don't have that much confusion in understanding the creation, understanding our religion. We don't have that much confusion. And I find that most everywhere I have been, everyone who has been Americanized have been confused. No matter what country it is, these countries that have been Americanized are confused and I see that this society is very much confused to the extent that they cannot cross the street without getting run over, so they have to have to stop on the red light and go on the green one. Because we, we live in a confused society. And we can take a look on simple things such as even food that we eat today. We have become so confused that we don't know what we're eating. All the instant food that we find on the shelves, we read the ingredients on there. The ingredients that has a word on there that goes from across the box there. What educated man knows what that means? With all the education that we have in our universities, we don't even know what that word means. But we're eating it. So actually, we don't even know what we're eating. We're and very so, removed. Yes, we're, we're so far removed from natural way of life. Uh, we don't know what we're eating, we, and we don't know what we're drinking. We're just here. And as I see, everyone becomes a robot. Even his mind is controlled. Uh, no one makes his own decision. And this is the way of life that has been shoved on Mr. Indian. And I find that our Indian people are not satisfied. They're not comfortable. There's unrest throughout this whole nation among the native people. Why? I take it that there is no failure in life. There is no such thing as failure in life until you try to be somebody else. There is no way you can fail if you are yourself. And this is what's happened to the Indian people. Many of our Indian people are not themselves because, and so they are not satisfied, they're not happy. But when we turn around and look at the past of our ancestors, <clears throat> there was a way of life in which we found comfort, in which we found satisfaction. There is nothing that can take the place of being satisfied and being happy in life. Another man brought his value system here, which is different from what we've always had here. So the, then we find our Indian people caught in two ways of life. 